Now we're going to learn how this ball gets through the pins. These balls do not, or these pins, the balls don't care either. But the pins don't care. They're not cheating you. They sit three feet apart, three feet apart, three feet apart, a foot between each pin, and then two feet between the other spaces, between two pins, obviously. So uh, they're set the same. We can just continuously rotate this, and you're gonna you're gonna have the same setup. What happens is, remember that I talked about in previous lessons. The scale lane is very very skinny and narrow. What you look at is an illusion, the rail tra railroad track effect, and so you're seeing the pins squash together in this big open spot when in reality it's a very skinny lane. So you need to know where and how the ball goes through the pins and why it causes the deflection it does. And then with your uniqueness, your ball motion, your revs, your speed, your choices physically, um, everything that you do, your boards, where you're going to place the ball, is to get this to drive through correctly these pins. Keep in mind, this is not a game of two pins. It's not a game of the pocket. This is a game of driving your ball through all 10 pins and through the maze and out the back of the maze. I'm going to show you, and this is stuff that I learned in Bolu, um, and mostly with Brad Angelo, who taught me quite a bit. I really appreciate all the stuff that he shared with me. Um, as a right-handed bowler, you have four pins. There's only four pins you need to worry about. If you watch this ball go through all four pins, and you basically have this inch spot to get it through there. When you hit this correctly, remember, it's a 15-pound ball. This is basically, let's just call it an average of four pins, or four pounds. So with that, not that this ball is going to run over these pins like paper. The ball deflects off the pin, as well as the pin deflecting off the ball. So when we hit this first, we always hit the one pin first. Even if you know, it looks like you're going to hit these two pins together, you never do. You hit the one pin first. There is a foot difference here. And your ball is eight and a half inches, so really it's almost impossible. It's tough to get it to that angle and this deep. So this is the reality of your ball motion coming in here. We want to catch it at this point when I'm rolling straight with power. So if I hit it here, it's going to come over and take out this row. It's going to take the two, four, and the seven. As it gets through this one, it deflects slightly. And so it comes over and hits the three pin. The three pin then takes out the six and the ten. The ball deflects again. And it's driving still. We want that ball driving through here. As it drives through, it's going to hit the five pin. Get that over to and take that out. And here's the key. If everything is driving correctly, this ball is going to finish off the deck. Just touching that nine pin like it did, hitting it, and finishing off the deck right here. If you do that, the rest of the pins get deflected properly. Proper deflection. You're going to get a strike basically every single time. You'll see that your ball will finish over here and here, and sometimes even right into the nine pin where you do get a strike. But if you slow it down in slow motion, you're going to find out that there was a lot of too much or too little deflection, and the pins jumped around and took each other out. Um, Sean Lee has a great name for his pro shop. It's called Pen Back. And the thing I love about it is this is not a game of ten spinners, ten throwers, ten jumpers. If you do 10 back, those pins go straight back every time. They don't need to touch the ball. There's no luck involved. It's proper deflection, and you get a strike every time. If you're looking for the pins to scatter, you're hoping on luck. Learn to dial the shot in and then repeat it, and that's how you can continue to get strikes. Um, even at the hardest times, you'll be able to read the story and make proper adjustments and still get the strikes. So those are the four pins. As I add other pins to the equation, just remember these pins go in sequence of how they're deflected. 
So if I add a pin here, it doesn't matter because as I come through here, remember that takes out that line. This one's going to take this one out right into the tin. So those pins become somewhat irrelevant. But those pins tell you the story. And that's the greatest thing about this. This is a very logical sport. It's a wonderful sport. Don't get frustrated. Do this. Figure it out. Think about it. Figure, watch, see what's happening. Then you can come up with your solution. And it's way more fun when you figure out the solution to this puzzle. It's a puzzle. It's a little maze. And remember, we're working in this tiny area here. So let's talk about that tiny area real quick. As this ball comes in, okay, so we're coming in straight at it. Remember, this is basically this piece of tape right here is my strike shot. It's about an inch, inch and a half. If I come over and miss that by, let's see, we're this far over with that strike zone. Look what happens. Completely, completely miss. Let's see where that miss is. It's actually in the middle of my piece of tape. It's that far over. And that's when you get the washout. Okay? As we come over and, and just barely clip this one, remember we're going to usually leave that two pin. Well, what happens is this jumps around and then it takes out the ones behind it. So that's when we leave the two pin when we're, we're not enough into the pocket. As we come just a little bit more, this is where you're going to get your, your sevens and tens. Um, and it's basically because as you drive through it, it's not driving um, in this particular circumstance. Everybody's situation is their unique one for this. I'm showing you all going straight at it. It's not high enough in the pocket. So because it's a little bit lower, this is either, either going to kick this and catch that two a little off. It'll come over and catch this four off, jump around our seven pin. That over there. It's going to jump around that seven pin and you can leave it. Or as it comes in there, we hit this one. We don't drive through it enough off of the first deflection so that as it comes in here, and this is what you guys see every time, and I don't care if it's a wrapping tin or a weak tin, it's the same solution. See where the pin goes. You come over and hit this pin. doesn't matter if it's coming over and flying around it, where it lies over into the gutter, it's too weak as it drives through the first part of that pocket, which is the one in the, in the three pin in this case. Back over. As we move just a little bit more, now we're getting into the area of proper deflection. So that's our strike zone. And you need a carpet. And thank you for Crown Lines for always allowing me to help here. These are awesome people in Denver, Colorado. You've got to come see them. Um, it's one of those privately owned uh, great places that I love to hang out. So anyhow, when you come into this spot, which we're right on that tape, we get proper deflection, takes them out, takes them out. And as we drive through, the five will take out the eight, and the ball's going to take out the nine. If we come in a little too high, and then what happens is, just like we had happen over here, we're going to come in, we're going to catch this one too far on the right-hand side, and it's going to skip around that, that four. And when you get too high into the pocket, that's when you leave that four pin. You get a little bit higher, and now we're into the big four, um, maybe the Greek church, something that's usually not very nice. So that just shows you our strike. There are two. So 
basically from my two fingers here, that distance is total disaster, total disaster, everything in between. And we have right in there this one inch, inch and a half that is your strike zone. So remember, you're rolling the ball down 60 feet of lane through oil, which I, I think of as ice. And then you come up to friction, which I always talk to people like it's, it's pavement so they can relate. 60 feet. And this is only 40, 41 inches and 41 three quarter inches wide. It's really narrow. You can hop across that quite easily. So rolling a 15 pound ball that far down the lane through ice, pavement, and then getting an inch spot and getting proper drive all the way through the pins to get these to go down. It's a pretty unique, very complicated sport. So give yourself credit when you're getting nines or leaving a nine or an eight. Basically, when you're leaving your nine and the eight, let's talk about that one real quick. When you come in, you've gotten basically proper deflection through the first part of the pocket. You've taken out the left side, you've taken out the right side. As you come in, if we have driven uh, the ball too hard through the pocket, it's going to come into this five pin. It's going to drive into the five pin too much. So the five pin's going to come over, maybe hit that one. You'll see it laying over and just missing the nine, and then the ball is going to come and miss it from this much to about that much. And that's when you leave the nine. The ball is driven through just a piece of paper too hard. You leave the eight. It's just the opposite. So we've got proper deflection through the beginning of the pocket, through the beginning of the maze. But it didn't quite drive through enough. And so this time we're going to catch this five pin a little weak. And it's going to just scoot around that eight pin. And then our ball is going to come over and get, get this. Uh, Get the nine pin. If your ball is a righty and everything's opposite for a lefty, one, excuse me, one, two, uh, five, eight. If you're a righty, you finish your ball right next to this nine pin, off the deck, hitting the nine pin, and you watch it, you're going to be able to replicate uh, that proper deflection every single time. So let's see if I can do speed worse than everything else. Let's see if we can drive a bowling ball through these 10 pins and show you how difficult this really, really is to get proper deflection. All right. I want to block you guys. I'm going to move you just slightly. So you can watch, and we want to see the pins go straight back and back, just like Sean Lee's shop in Denver, Colorado. So we do this at uh, the Bowl U camps where people get to bowl and try to get strikes, and it's very intriguing that most people don't know to put the illusion out. And they struggle, struggle, struggle with this. And the reality is this simple. Many people struggle um, in the Bowl U camps. I used to work with Bowl U and uh, organized and coached and did a lot of the marketing for the folks as well as making uh, all their products for them. And <laughs> getting so. 
set up just here correctly. So we're looking for these pins to go 10 back, just like we told you at Sean Lee's shop here in Denver, Colorado. And it's just this simple to get proper deflection. But it's just this easy to get uh, proper reflection. It truly is that simple. When they deflect correctly, they'll go 10 back. Your job is to be able to repeat that action every single time for your 300 you desire. If you read the puzzle, get your ball through the entire maze the way you want, be able to read your ball and understand what ball motion truly is, you're going to have a lot more fun. Good luck.